Hey everybody, it's me. I'm finally back. I know it's taken me a while to get this out, but it's been a super busy summer for me. I'm starting graduate school, so I'm sure you guys can all imagine I've been under a little bit of stress and trying to get a lot of stuff together. But that being said, I think for the summer I'm going to do a project for May and June and then one for July and August just so that I don't have to worry about stressing out about it and I'm sure everybody's having fun with their summer anyway. For this May slash June project, we are going to do some faux leather earrings, which I see all over the place. They're super fun. I see a lot of people sell these on Etsy, so I think it's another project that you can make some money off of. I personally don't sell these. I just sometimes make them for fun, but um, if you're creative enough and you get them good enough, you definitely could. There's tons of options for these. Like It's literally endless. You can pretty much make earrings any shape, any design, as we all know. I'm just going to do a couple of the basic ones because um, I don't do these a whole lot and then you guys can maybe start there and learn kind of like I am or if you're a pro just do some of the more extravagant designs. So the first design I'm going to do is the classic teardrop. I'm going to go to images over here Okay, and search teardrop. And I have purchased a teardrop image, this one. Um, there's obviously a bunch on here that you can purchase as well. Or you could create your own or buy an SVG or find a free SVG to do this if you didn't want to. I don't mind spending 99 cents for these things, especially since they're built into the software. I think it's just easier that way. So insert images. For my teardrop, I don't like this uh, hole cutout part. I'm going to hide it just so you guys can see what I'm talking about. A lot of people, I've seen earrings designed exactly like this. Um, not my favorite design, but if you wanted, you could do both of these. They're, they'd be, whoops, <laughs> they'll be on two different layers of leather because it's, as you can see, two different cuts. Um, or you could do one or the other. I'm going to take this bottom one and then I'm going to layer something else on top of it. So I am going to get rid, pressing delete, of the teal colored one. Then I am going to flip this so that it looks more like an earring and I'm going to size it. Um, I wrote down a couple sizes just that I like. Obviously you can make your earrings as big or as little as you want them to be. I like doing this. I like the height to be 1.75 um, and I found that without, whoops, unlocking it. Yeah. So the shape I wanted was 1.003 times 1.75. That work yes it did okay so that's what I want to do for um, my little teardrop earrings that's the shape and the size I like obviously you can play with it and make it as big or as small as you want to I have sensitive ears so I like all my earrings to be a little bit smaller so that's why mine are a little bit tinier um so I'm gonna copy and paste I pressed control or command C and then control or command V of course to copy and paste you can also right click or double click depending on if you're using a Mac or um, PC. Um, so on top of this I want to layer another teardrop so I'm going to again copy and paste and just so we can see the layer I'm going to change that to pink. I'm not actually going to make it pink but I just want to show you guys and then I'm going to unlock it again. For my little teardrop that I'm going to layer on top I want it to be 0 0.82 times 1.417. Does that work? It did not. I get a little click happy sometimes. So again, you could do whatever you wanted here. You could layer a different shape on top of this or the same, a different size. Totally doesn't matter. This is just what I want to do. So I'm going to copy and paste that again. Just kind of put it on top just so you guys can kind of see the design I'm going for. I am going to cut those in two different colors. So they'll obviously be cut out separately as we know if we've been watching any of my other tutorials. But just so we get the basic idea of what the shape is going to look like on top of each other, I want to do that. Okay, for the second set of earrings, we're going to make, remember, three total. I'm going to do a tassel design because I know those are kind of popular in the faux leather earring world. Um, it's kind of like a nice boho look that are pretty trendy and they're not too terribly difficult to make. So I figured that I'd include that. So again, you're just going to go over to images and then I've already typed in tassel but you'll type tassel in up here um, if you want to make the tassel of course 
like I said, you can make anything. I, I already know it's way at the bottom, so I've scrolled down to the bottom. I've already purchased this. It was another 99 cent purchase, which again, I think is worth it. And then I'm gonna insert it. So this, um, just to keep things together, kind of, I'm gonna change the color of this to the same color as that back teardrop, um, just so I kinda can see what I'm working with and how many layers I'm gonna have going on right now. I'll change that in the end so we have a better idea of what it's actually gonna look like. For my tassel, I did change the shape. I wanted the height, I'm gonna come over here, highlight the height and enter two. I wanted it to be a height of two inches and that makes the width 2.108 which I have tested and works perfectly for um, the look I want. If you want your tassels to be longer or wider obviously you can edit that. Um, you can unlock this and kind of play with the dimensions if you want. If you keep it locked it's gonna stay like this um, whereas if you unlock it you can make it really wide or really skinny. So I'm gonna undo all that get back to the nope there we go yes get back to that okay so now just like before I'm gonna copy and paste again control or command and C and then control or command and V or right clicking or double clicking to copy and paste so now we also have our tassel design ready to cut Okay, and for the third design, I really like the like um, leaf feather look. I know that's pretty popular as well in the faux earring world. Um, so again, I'm going to go to images. If you type leaf um, to go with this like leaf theme and then scroll, um, it went really fast, but I think most of them are towards the bottom. If you scroll, you can find a couple good shapes um, that you could cut an earring out of leather with, something like... Something like that would work. I like those. I really like the palm leaf idea. Um, so I kind of made my own. That one would be a good one too for an earring. Um, what I actually use is a feather. Let's see. Let me go to purchased. And I altered it a little bit to look more like a leaf. <laughs> I'm not a botanist, so uh, I don't claim to be. I will stick with microbiology, but if I am wrong and this does not leave, look like a palm leaf at all, please do not judge me because I don't know what I'm talking about anyway, but I like it. So I, um, you could leave the little stick there if you want. I don't really like it. So the way that I remove that, I'll show you guys, let's zoom in real quick, is I think I might have included this in one of my tutorials before, but I'll insert like a, a random shape, a square, and then I unlock it just so it's easier to mess with and then I'll get it right there to where it kind of closes that off for me and then I select both of these at the same time um, you're gonna click command or control after you've selected one and then select the other and that's gonna grab both of them for you and then I'm gonna come over here and click slice I don't know if I've talked about this but this is a really good way to cut pieces out of a shape or image that you don't really like to get down to what you actually do like so see, I really like the look of that. I don't know if it looks more like a leaf or a feather. I, I really don't care just because I do like the shape of it. But that looks um, like it'll make a great earring to me. So I'm going to zoom out. Now I'm going to size that. Or, well, I'll first put it on a color so it can match our layers. And then I'm going to size it to what I want. I think I wanted the width of this one to be 0 0.75. And I wanted the height to be 1.788. But you have to click enter, which I clearly have a bad habit of not doing. Okay, I like that a lot. That is what I want it to look like. So again, I am copying and pasting. That way I have two palm leaves, as I will call them, or feathers, depending on what type of person you are, I guess. I have two tassels, I have two big teardrops, and two little teardrops to layer. So. Now we can decide what colors to put everything on before um, we move to the actual cutting. I bought a couple faux leather sheets there. I mean, these things come in every color. They come with all types, all types of designs. I just did some of the metallic ones I, um, and then a matte black. I have like a pearlescent colored one, a rose gold one, and then a black one. I think for the back of the teardrops, I want to do that like white pearly color. 
and then I maybe I'll put the rose gold on top of it. That'd be kind of cool for the feather looking thing. Um, I think I'm going to do black. That's kind of fun. And then for the tassels, I am going to do the white color because I already made some black tassels. Um, so that's just to see what our design will kind of look like. Um, like I've mentioned in a couple other of my tutorials, it really doesn't matter what color you set these things because whatever you load is what Cricut's going to cut it on. So just so that I can cut um, everything on the same sheet and it'll kind of work that way for me, I'm going to make it all one color, just a random color. But you can see now it's going to be a little bit more confusing for the eyes, but that's okay. So decide what colors you want your stuff to be. Look at your different um, leather sheets and get everything ready. Turn your Cricut on, get everything ready to go, and then we'll go ahead and scroll over here and click Make It. Okay, so once you click Make It, something like this is going to pop up. I like to spread my stuff out a little bit, especially when I'm um, doing a couple different colored things. So, I wanted oops, these. I wanted these to be on black. I want these to be on like a pearlescent white. And then I wanted these to be like a rose gold color. So I'm just kind of, you don't really have to do this. Um, and again, you can totally cut. You can unload your mat and reload to do this. I just like to get it all done and kind of one fail swoop. So I'm just moving them around. That way I can cut um, little strips of leather and put them all on the same mat and let my Cricut um, do it all on one mat, if that makes any sense at all. Once we move on to the next step, you'll see what I'm talking about. So once I kind of get this kind of thing going on, um, I'm going to go ahead and cut strips of leather to load on my mat. So for my black strip, it's probably going to be like an 8 by 3 My, um, or my white strip is going to be like an 8 by 3 My black strip is going to be like a 2.5 by 2.5 inch. And then this will probably be the same, like 2.5 inches by 2.5 inches. So um, go ahead and start cutting your leather pieces out, and that will be the next step. So you can see my leather sheets here, um, or faux leather, these. I got from Michael's. You can really get these things at most of the craft stores, Michael's, Hobby Lobby's, if you have a local craft store. Um, always a good place, and they aren't too expensive. They're not super thick, which is why they cut really nicely. I don't know if you can tell, but it's really nice. Okay, and there you have it, my three little pieces of leather. So the next step is to obviously go ahead and load that on your mat. Like I said, you can do um, a couple, you can switch the loading of your mat a couple different times or you can load it all at once. Something important to note is you want a pretty sticky mat for this project. You can either use like a brand new green standard grip mat or you can use one of the purple strong grip mats. These sometimes do leave um, a little bit of like residue on the mat so if this is like a brand new mat that you absolutely do not want ruined I wouldn't use it I would just go get the purple mat but I have a couple um, mats hanging around so I don't mind to use a newer mat so another important thing to note about the faux leather is it's kind of like HTV heat transfer vinyl you're gonna um, you can't probably tell on that piece but you're going to put it shiny side down so Make sure the shiny side is not up, it is face down. So I'll start with my white piece because that's the biggest one I am loading. And like I said, I kind of arranged my things the way I wanted to. So I know that that will go there. Smooth it down if you need, but it usually adheres pretty well. And then um, my pink piece. That is going to go over here. I have it set to where it needs to go from 9 to around 12. And then down to at least 2 inches, which it does. A little bit of waste, but I like to have too much as opposed to not enough. And then here's my black piece, and it needs to be loaded at the 4, making sure it goes down to at least 6 and over to at least 2. And it sure does. 
Okay, so now you can see my mat is loaded and I am ready to cut. Okay, so as always, once you get to this point and your loading button is flashing, you're gonna go ahead and um, pin it in there. Just pressing that button, sorry. Had to use two hands to make sure it loaded appropriately. And then once it's loaded and make sure it's loaded well, you're gonna come over here, just like your computer says to do, and you're gonna press go. And then, as always, it's going to tell us it's preparing and it's going to start cutting. Once your machine is done cutting, as indicated by both your computer and the flashing load and unload button, you are going to do exactly that, unload it, and then we're going to move on. So once we have our beautiful earring um, templates basically cut out, we're going to move on to actually creating them. You are going to need some of these little earring pieces. I got these at Hobby Lobby for like $1.99 or something, a bag of them. I'm pretty sure Walmart has them, um, Target, maybe not Target, maybe some of the bigger Targets, but a lot of stores in like the jewelry making section have these earring skeletons. I threw away the package, so I can't remember exactly what they're called, but um, if you go into your craft making store, you go into the jewelry making section, section, you will definitely find these. Another thing you'll need is something to pierce your earrings with so that those will go in. I'm using this Cricut piercing stabbing tool. I don't know what it's called, but it is really sharp at the end. It's got kind of a curve. You could also use a thumbtack or a safety pin, anything that'll pierce really well. You'll also need some needle nose pliers and a hot glue gun, which I have on hand, or some type of glue. I'm sure um, like super glue or a super strong craft glue would work just as well here. So I also have this handy little tool that has this um, self-healing backing, which I'm gonna use to stab. If you don't care about the surface, you could stab right through, but I'm just gonna use this because I have it, so why not? So the first pair that I will make is the little palm feather things. Um, this is so, literally so easy. I'm gonna go ahead and get out two of these. So you can see here. And the next thing I'm going to do is just pierce a hole really close to the top. So it's gonna connect in here. This is where it's gonna hold. I don't know if you can see how tiny that is, yep. So you wanna make sure your hole is really close to the top unless you have some of these O-rings and then you could connect two of those. So I'll show you a little bit closer up here, just about as high as I can and just stabbing and you can see it's kind of made a hole and then I'm going to do the same thing to the other one and once I have done that I'm going to take my needle nose pliers to my earring backing and kind of unfurl it if you can see that happening and then I'm gonna hook that through the hole, just like that. And then I'm gonna take my needle nose pliers again to bend that back to where it was. Get it as close as you can, because you don't want your designed to fall out of your earring. Okay, and there I have it. One beautiful feather slash palm leaf thing earring. As you can see, now I have a set of earrings. So we will move on next. I will do the teardrop ones. I'm going to, like I said, layer this rose gold on top of the white. It's gonna look like that. There you can see. Um, you don't have to do this. I've also made a pair before of just teardrops and that's what that looks like. So 
do whatever you want here. There's so many things, any shape, of course, like we talked about. So again, I'm gonna do the same thing. Zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to stab near the top of these. Make sure I get all the way through this time on my first try. Obviously make sure you're going for the center. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on here. And then to layer them, let's get out our earring pieces again. So same thing as the last set, start by uncurling this. And to layer them, you can stack them on top of one another, line up those holes, and then take it through both of them, like so. Again, curl that back to where it goes. And we have our layered teardrop earring. And there we have it, the layered teardrop set. And you can see them there. So we'll add that to my stack of done earrings and we will move on to the tassel. I think the tassel is kind of the most difficult. Um, it's not really difficult, it just takes some curling in. Here's a pair of done tassels. I made the black one. You can see the top can be kind of awkward. There's ways you could cover that with some extra leather. You could put um, a bead up there. You could use one of those O-rings. I directly connected my earring piece. So you could connect one of the O-rings and then this on there. I'm just gonna show you the basic, exactly what I did with these, but there's um, a lot of options if you don't like the look of just the plain tassel. So here's our little tassel cutout, which is super cute as is. I'm going to turn it over and then make my stabbing point up here in this top right corner. And I stabbed plumb through that thing. So if that happens, that's okay. You can just move over a little bit. Try again, that's a lot better. See my hole so same thing as the last couple with the earring and then I'm going to take it through this way because obviously I want the leather to be what shows and then I'm going to curl it up So you should have something that looks like this. So what I do next is I literally place a line of glue and I curl like that until you get to the end. I'm showing you this just so you get an idea before I start moving. So it'll look something like that, obviously a little bit tighter. If you have this tool that we used in the um, flower tutorial, it can help you to get some tighter curls, as we all know, from rolling millions of flowers. If you did that project, you just swipe it on there and it'll help you get them really, really tight. So obviously it came off, but like I said, I'm gonna place a line of glue and start curling. So you don't wanna to put too, too much, especially at the end there, or it'll show but the nice thing about hot glue, at least in my opinion, is that when it dries, it's really easy to peel off. So I usually don't worry about it too much because I just peel off any excess. So one 
once I get to the end there, I'm obviously going to need a little bit more or mine won't stick. So I'm just going to place another dab. And keep rolling on the end, just hold real good. That was a very messy example, but um, of course, as always, be really careful if you're using hot glue. I probably don't do things the safest way on here, um, but yeah, I'm sure there's a safe way to use hot glue. I just don't, don't bet that I'm probably doing it that way. So like I said, if you have any excess glue at the top, you can easily peel it off if you're using hot glue. I have a little stringy piece. And if any comes out on the side, I'm gonna let that dry for a little, but after it's dry, I'll probably peel off that little glob. Um, once you get the tassel look, I kinda like to play with mine to make them flare out a little bit. Just mess with them if you want to. I just loosen them up, that way it doesn't look like they were literally just made. Give them a little bit more of that tassel appearance. So there's one of my tassels. Okay, and there we have it, the tassel earrings. So as always, make this your own. There's so many things you could do with this. You could do literally any shape, any design. Um, a lot of people also will paint these after. So I've seen where people will do like half, so they would paint like the bottom half of this, like gold or pink or whatever or um, layering more vinyl. So you could do stripes, chevrons, anything. If you don't like that the back of these don't have anything on them, there are some types of faux leather that look a little bit nicer on the back. I grabbed um, the Silhouette brand, which does not have anything on the back. So if you don't like that, I would make sure that the one you get does have a nicer, nicer backing if you care about that at all. Um, one last thing to note, um, I have worn these and I have really sensitive ears and you would think they'd be like really heavy and painful, but they actually weren't. So I'm pretty happy with that. Overall, I think this is a really easy project. Definitely one of the easier projects I have done. I when I, Before I ever first made this project, I held off on so long because I thought it was going to be super difficult, but it was not difficult at all. So give this one a shot. Obviously, it's something if you are um, got your, got your ears pierced, you can totally use this. So... Give it a shot, post it in the group, and let all of us see what you've created. Thanks for watching.